Hey, what's up, future pilots? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Thanks for joining me on another video. This one is going to be on the magnetic compass. It's actually going to be a series of videos on the magnetic compass and its associated airs. This is a tricky topic for students, so I wanted to make sure we break it down into small sections so that you can understand it in each of the small sections before moving on. And we're also going to have some cool new animations in here to give you that visual feel for the video. So this first video is going to be on the air of variation. We'll talk about this air when we get into cross-country planning. And this is the, the, the basis of the air, where it comes from, and how it affects us as pilots. All right, so all aircraft are equipped with emetic, magnetic compasses. The magnetic compass does not rely on aircraft power, batteries, vacuums, or pumps. All the compass needs is Earth's magnetic fields, which hopefully aren't going to be going anywhere soon. Depending on where you are flying and how you are flying, a compass reading can vary widely due to, a certain, due to certain compass errors. And this video series, like I said, is going to talk about these errors. So the first error, which this video covers, is variation. The difference between a true course or heading and a magnetic course or heading is called the magnetic variation. So when we want to go from true direction to a magnetic direction, the same goes for winds. It doesn't have to be a, a course or heading. Same thing for wind directions. You can have winds in terms of true, or you can have them in terms of magnetic. And that means they're either referencing a true north or a magnetic north. And when we're flying, we're basing everything off our magnetic compass. We even calibrate our heading indicator with our magnetic compass. So we want to use magnetic directions when we're flying. So we want to eventually know how to get from true to magnetic, and that difference is called magnetic variation. So this variation is due to the strength of Earth's magnetic field not being consistent around the globe. So whether you're in, let's say, San Diego or New York City, the pull of Earth's magnetic field on your compass is going to be completely different, and that's a variation is. It's the variation of the magnetic field. Isogonic lines are drawn on charts and updated regularly with changes in Earth's magnetic field so that we can make the correction for variation depending on where we are flying. So here is a map. This is an FAA figure that you might see on your FAA written exam. And these black curving lines are called isogonic lines. And so if we just look at one of these lines, like let's say this one that says five degrees E, which stands for east, and then this, these W's over here stand for west. So if we look at the five degree east line, all, the, all down this line, the variation is going to be five degrees to the east. All down this line will be 10 degrees to the east. All here, 15 degrees, 20 degrees, you get the picture. It's just like an isobaric line which shows you areas of equal pressure. If you're looking like on a weather chart or you're watching the new weather news, you see those sort of like contours of lines that show e areas of equal pressure. Same thing when you're looking at an aeronautical chart and you see the lines of elevation, they show a connected circle line contour and everywhere on that line is the same level of elevation. This is sort of that same contour type idea for lines so that anywhere along this line you have the same amount of variation and then right here we have zero variation going through the united states on the east side of michigan down through the east side of illinois the middle of kentucky tennessee and then through the the border of alabama and georgia so here you don't have to correct anything if you're flying along on this line close to this line you don't have to correct anything going from true to magnetic. So when we're planning a, a course or a, a cross-country flight, we we'll want to find these lines on our aeronautical aviation charts. And this is a picture from a sectional chart. And these isogonic lines are shown as magenta dashed lines here. And they are labeled just like we just saw. So this one is two degrees to the west. So what we do is we're, we're charting our course. We're drawing our lines on these charts, and then we look for the closest line of variation or our isogonic line, this dash magenta line, 
and we use that value to correct from true to magnetic. So how do we do that? So again, I said true direction, to get to true direction to magnetic direction, the difference is variation. And we either add it or we subtract it. We subtract it when it's an east variation, and then we add it when it's a west variation. So for example, in this example right here, we have a two degrees west variation. So that means if our true direction, let's say we plotted our course, we measured our course with our plotter tool on the sectional chart, and our course is, our true course is 210 degrees, and we see that the closest variation is that plus two degree is that two degrees west, we add it because it's west. If it was east, we would subtract it. So in this course, we're gonna do plus two. Again, if that was if that said two degrees E, that would be two degrees east, and we'd subtract it. It would be minus two if that was E, but it's not, it's plus two degrees. So to, we add the two, we add our two course to that variation, that isogonic value and we get 212 degrees for our magnetic course. Okay, and I mentioned this before, we're doing this with course, that example was with course, so this direction was course here, and then we got a magnetic course here. But this could have also been done with heading, and it could also be done with winds. So if we read a wind value, the general rule is if you read it, it's true for winds. So if we get from a winds aloft or a METAR and we read a wind direction, that's gonna be terms of true. And the reason they do that when you read it is because they assume that you're in the middle of cross country planting so that you're gonna use it with your true direction that you measured on your sectional chart. So those red winds are to be used with the true courses and directions that you measure on your sectional chart. And then when you hear a wind direction, like while, from ATC or ATIS while you're flying, that's gonna be in terms of magnetic. So just a general rule to know when you read it, it's true for wind direction. So if we wanted to know, if we read a wind's aloft and we wanted to know in terms of magnetic for when we're flying, let's say our wind direction from the wind's aloft was 090, we would then add that same variation, that two degrees west for our example, to get our winds in, true, in terms of a magnetic direction. So this, this can be used for courses, headings, winds, whatever. It just goes from in reference to true north to in reference to magnetic north. And we want to use magnetic stuff when we're flying. 